Hi everyone, my name's Catherine Narena. I'm a crochet designer from South London in the UK and welcome to this My Crochet podcast. I'm Catherine Crochet here on YouTube and I also on Instagram where I'm most active but if you want to find me elsewhere I also have a Facebook page and a Pinterest page and an email list that you can sign up to if you want to to get news about my latest pattern releases and discount codes and things like that. Um, so it is Tuesday, the last Tuesday of October, I think it's the 26th and we're on half term here in the UK. So my girls are off school, but they are actually at school today at a holiday club um, while I'm working. So I thought I'd take the opportunity um, during my lunchtime to film a quick podcast to show you what I've been up to recently. Um, I've got a few bits and pieces to show you. It's I can't show you everything I've been working on because one thing is a commission which uh, won't be published until next spring, March I think, um, but I can show you most of the other bits and pieces. Uh, life seems to have been quite busy the last couple of weeks so I haven't done quite as much as I was hoping to do, but hopefully there's still a few bits that you'll find interesting. So let's get started. Um, well, the first thing I have to tell you about actually is something that I had finished and showed you last time, but I just wanted to let you know that it has now been released as a pattern. So this is my, I folded it in half, my Starry Spruce table runner which I made with yarn from Hobby Yarns for the Hobby Christmas Decor Challenge. Um, it's their rainbow cotton yarn um, which is really nice to work with and so this is half of the table runner. It's got just as a reminder it's got Christmas trees on it or spruce trees on it going up to the middle and then in the middle there's a little ring of stars where you could put your a candle or a centerpiece or whatever you like and then in the other half of the run of the trees point in the opposite direction so from each end of the table hold it sideways you can see the trees would be pointing towards the middle like that and so this pattern's now been released and it's available in my Etsy Ravelry and Lovecrafts um, stores and um, I'll put a link to this and, and all the other things that I mention, any other patterns I mention or anything else like that in the show notes, which will be linked to in the in the description um, for this podcast. So if you're interested in getting a copy of the pattern and making yourself a new table runner for Christmas, um, or it doesn't have to be for Christmas, obviously, um, then that's where you can find it. Um, it's also um, going to be available on the um, Hobby Yarns website to purchase at the same price as it is elsewhere um, or if you're um, a member of Hobby's, um, I can't remember what they call it, Hobby Plus I think it's called, if you're um, signed up to their um, sort of premium scheme then you get access to all their Hobby Plus patterns, which will include this for free um, as part of that membership. And Hobby are also translating it into a number of different other um, languages. So if you would like it in a different language that Hobby might translate it into, um, then then it would be available there in that language shortly. It's not, it's not up yet, but um, I think the plan is to have it up there soon so that people have time to make it before Christmas if you'd like to. So that's my first bit of news, new pattern release. Um, I haven't got any other finished objects to show you today. Um, so I'll move on to um, works in progress. So I'll show you this one next. So um, this is progress on my revival sweater that I'm making, which is a design by Heather at HDG Designs Crochets. She's on uh, YouTube and Instagram and probably lots of other places too. So 
last time I showed you, I had my hands full with lots of different granny squares that I'd made. And I think, I'm not sure if I'd made all of them or if there was a couple to go, but I was pretty close to making all of them. So I haven't spent that much longer working on it actually since then, but I have joined the granny squares together with a um, continuous join as you go method. So it's all described in the pattern, but the last round for each granny square is in gray and you just snake your way around all of them to join them all up. And then it's got a couple of rounds around the outside of a granny Hold a bit place so you can see of a granny two rows of granny stripe around the outside so that makes there were two of these that makes the front and back panel of the jumper and it will um if i hold it up it'll go that way around so it'll be three squares high and four four across so there's two panels like that and then on one of them which will be the back it was identical, but it's now got these rows of half treble stitches added to make sort of the back of the jumper and going over the, the shirt to form the shoulders. Um, and then the other bit that I've done on it is I've started and I have nearly finished. I've just got a few more rows to go. The ribbing, which will go around the bottom of the jumper like that. So it's just really short rows of um, half treble stitches. This is all UK terms I'm using. So half double crochet in U US terms. In the um, back loops only, it's quite a standard way of doing it to get this um, ribbed effect. And um, yeah, it's when all the pieces of the jumper are finished, you have to sew them together to join them all up so i've still got to make the cowl for the neck and and obviously the sleeves and then you sew them all together and i've well i've only ever made two crochet garments before and neither of them involved any sewing so this will be a first for me and um what i was going to tell you about this as well this one i'm wearing is one of the two jumpers i made and the, for the ribbing on this which it's got around the cuffs and around the bottom it's done using front post and back post stitches instead. So the stitches are in the opposite direction and they can just be made onto it. So doing it this way, I think I prefer this kind of ribbing. I think it looks a little bit better. They both look nice, but I think I've got a slight preference for this sort of ribbing. What do you think? Um, but it does. it is gonna need sewing. And I think I've not sewn things together before. I think, my instinct tells me I prefer crocheting, I think because I know I can just keep going with the same tension that I've been crocheting the whole garment. I get think I guess think with sewing, is there a chance of doing it a bit too tight maybe? Or um or perhaps piercing through through a bit of the yarn rather than going going into a stitch. But well we'll see. I'll be on to that bit before long, I hope. And I'll I'll let you know. Um, and I was going to tell you that this sweater that I'm wearing, it did feature in a podcast probably about a year ago, I'm not sure, and some of you might recognise it. This is the Gorse Sweater uh, by Linda Scooter, I think, and um, I think she's 111 Makes. I'll have to check, um, but I'll link to it below. But this was one I was making in a previous podcast, which I did finish at least, I think it was last year, it might have been the year before, I can't really remember now. Time just seems to be going by so quickly and the years all merge, don't they? But um, I've got this out again because it's um, a nice autumn jumper to wear. This is in Stylecraft Special Aran Copper Yarn. It did end up a bit bigger than I was intending um so it's it's quite loose and baggy but it is cozy but i do tend to like my jumpers a little more fitted but um i think if this were any bigger then i might feel a bit frumpy in it but um it's 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 just what's the word just small enough yeah 
but it could do with perhaps being a tiny bit smaller. Mm. So, yeah, that's my revival sweater. I just thought of something else I was going to say. Oh, yeah, so the thing I was saying about... Um, well, I've only made two of the things before this and the Sunday Fun Day Cardi by Iron Lamb, and both of them turned out a little bit bigger than I was planning for. And this one as well, I was had been intending to make it size two, but then depending on which size you make, you have to make different number of granny squares. And size one and size two um, both have this array, array of three by four, array of 12 granny squares for the front and back. If you're making size two, you then add some rows of um, half treble stitches down the sides to make it a bit bigger. So I added that onto one half and then thought, wow, that looks really wide. Sort of pinned it around me with some stitch markers and realised it was way too wide. So I've switched now. Um, fortunately, I didn't have to change anything I'd done already. The, this bit is the same for either size. Um, and now I'm making the rest of it following the size one instructions, which I don't think it will be a size one because it's ending up bigger than um, than it should do. Um, but yeah, I've had to switch. So it's quite good really because it means it's fewer stitches to crochet in the end. So that's um, one whip that I've been working on. Right, the next one. I'll just put this away, is last time I showed you the yarn for it and it's more hobby yarn. So I'll show you the yarn again and then I'll show you what I've made with it. Um, this is some spare balls I haven't yet used. So it is um, Hobby's soft alpaca yarn. Can you see that okay? Um, it is 100% alpaca. Um, and it is, it says it's super fine, yarn weight one on the label, and they recommend a three millimetre hook for it. Um, and this was sent to me from Hobby to take part in their cosy fall campaign, which is to make something inspired by autumn leaves. Um, which are quite like leafy designs. I've already got made a the hornbeam blanket, if you know that pattern. And um and I like autumn colours too. So this sounded like something right up my street. So I decided, having just made a triangular shawl and quite liking it, I decided to make another triangular shawl. So just trying to untangle a bit so I can lift this up for you. This, I haven't named it yet actually. This is what I've come up with. It's not finished yet. So the main colour is the is the blue, bluey green, which is what most of it is, with this um slightly ribbed repeating stitch pattern. I'm just trying to work out. I had a preference, which is the other side. I decided this side you might not be able to tell, looked slightly better the way the ribs went because then it ends up having the um, the two sort of post bits on either side of the hole um, being sort of recessed slightly back whereas on the other side it's the other way around the post bits are at the front and I felt like with that version you didn't quite see See the texture of the ribbing so much but anyway you can wear it either way around but i decided i'm gonna think of this as the front so the main bit of the shawl is this sort of ribbing with holes then there's a row of the bright green and then i've started some autumn leaves in the sort of coppery color yarn um which i haven't quite finished yet and then there'll be another green stripe and then I'll finish it off. I think it should be about the right size then. So hopefully it's not really that many more rows to go, although obviously they're getting a lot longer now. Um, but hopefully that I don't think there's too much longer to go with this. And then um, I'll write this up. I love the contrast 
between the I think the this copper I'm sorry I keep trying to position it so you can there that's quite good isn't it so you can see I love the contrast between this coppery color yarn and the blue I think they look they look great together um am I showing you the back or the front I can't remember this is what I think of as the front yeah but it is pretty pretty interchangeable really that's the back you see a bit more of the green on that side slightly fatter green stripe but yeah so I need to name this finish it and write it up and then that will be another new short pattern and this one I think I'll probably get written up before the Minerva shawl that I showed you last time because the techniques in it, it this is made with tapestry crochet which I've already got explanation of how to do it in my existing patterns and I know exactly what I'm doing and um, how to write up this sort of pattern so this pattern will be much more straightforward to write up than the Minerva shawl which is also still still waiting to be written up so but I think I'm gonna just get this one done because it's straightforward and then I'll work on writing up the Minerva shawl um, later when I've got a bit more a bit more time to concentrate on that and also like I was saying last time to add in some um, some photos step-by-step -step photos showing how how to do it so those are my two whips that I've been working on over the last couple of weeks um, another project which I was intending to work on it was the juniper jumper that I'd started making for my daughter possibly as a birthday present for September but then I realized that wasn't going to happen so I was thinking of doing it for Christmas now it has grown a tiny bit more since last time so there's two rows of bobbles I'm not sure when I did this extra bit but there is a mistake somewhere and I've frogged it twice I don't know why I'm having so much trouble counting but um this end the bobbles is, are in the right position you can see it's centered they're centered between the bobbles and the row below then by the time you get to this end they're not quite can you see this one's closer to this bobble than this one so something's gone wrong and i frogged it twice and um i don't know what i was doing wrong somewhere there's a the stitch counting has gone wrong anyway but now i'm looking at it again actually i'm rethinking i was about to tell you that inspired by Emma Carter who also podcasts on here and has a frogged section in her podcast where she tells you about all the product uh, projects that she's frogged which sometimes there aren't any sometimes there's a couple I was thinking about being bolder and deciding to just frog this project partly because I think it's the sort of thing it, obviously I'm making the jumper to a specific size and if she doesn't wear it soon it will be too small for her also it's going to be quite a cozy jumper so it's really for the winter um, plus I've got low feel like I've got loads of other things on at the moment that if I was going to get this done and I'd need to take, make two, one for my other daughter as well, I'd need to really, really crack on with it. And I just don't know if I've got the time at the moment. So I had decided to frog it. Partly, I think, put being put off by the issues I was having with counting stitches, but maybe I should have just got on with it. But <laughs> having now got it out to show you, I'm holding it up and looking at the picture and I think actually... It does look really nice doesn't it so maybe it will stay unfrogged for a little bit longer and we shall see so watch this space to find out whether or not i continue it or frog it but i think if i don't make it in time for christmas then i probably won't make it because it'll be too small and the way the, the jumper works the sizes of the pattern I think I'm making she's 11 I'm making her the biggest size available so um because another option obviously would be to make it the next size up so it's definitely too big and it would get more wear the following winter but that's not an option if they're at that size isn't available um so 
I don't think I'm going to be working on this again, at least for the next couple of weeks. Maybe I'll reassess in a couple of weeks, see how everything else has gone. Um, but there's a high chance that this project will be frogged. So <laughs> that was my sort of frogged section, which turned into actually maybe not, but we'll have to wait and see. Oh, I'm getting quite hot here. The sun's come out. It's a really nice autumn day. I'm just going to take this off because it's getting quite cosy in the sunshine. Oh, can you hear that? That's the static. Is my hair going to go crazy? I don't know. Right, what next? So I've shown you the new pattern release and my current whips that I've been working on. There are of course other whips as always but those are the ones that have had some progress on them. So there's not much else to show you. I thought what I'd do like I did last time is just show you a bit of show you my organised October bingo grid and um because we're nearly at the end of October now how that's looking and um sort of show you my progress on that. So Last time I had finished the Minerva shawl, that was the green one with the leaves around the edge. My revival sweater, I reckon I'm about halfway through finishing it, maybe. Juniper jumper, that's, I've added all these question marks on it now because that I might just frog and abandon. Pumpkins, I made two pumpkins. Previously I'd thought, oh, maybe I'll make four, but I thought, but actually, I don't think I'm going to make any more, not this year anyway. Maybe I'll make a couple each year and then it can be slowly added to rather than putting pressure on myself to make loads this year. So I've coloured in all the boxes of that because that's finished. My connected cushion, I need to finish that off and I haven't um, touched it at all. I don't think it'll take too long, but it does need a little bit of thinking, which is why it hasn't happened because most of my crochet I do in the evening and I just need projects that I can just... Pull, pull out and know what I'm doing and get going without too much thinking or brain power or decision making. This is the hobby cosy full, I've written scarf because at the beginning of the month I was thinking it might be a scarf but then it, it's actually a shawl now and that is nearly done so that's nearly coloured in. Um, the Ashbury shawl which is a commission for a magazine I've made the shawl I just need to add it's going to have tassels on it so I just need to make and add those tassels which is probably a 15 minute job or so um so that won't take long and then that's done I haven't started that and haven't started that yet which are both other commissions to be released next year this one will be my next priority because I need to get that it's a whole blanket it's going to take um quite a while I think to make and it needs to be finished by early early December to be sent off to the magazine so that's where I am priorities at, at the moment then really are to finish off the hobby cozy fall shawl and um hopefully finish off my revival sweater and not in not too long um uh, yeah and I'm working on that blanket um commission for the magazine um i've been feeling recently that i'm perhaps there's lots of things i want to make and i've been wondering if i've been taking on too many projects or commissions which although they're my ideas they're not there are things I want to make, but not the things I really, really, really want to make. And I think once I get these current commissions out of the way, which are due early December, I think I'm, I always think this to myself, but I might have a break of from submitting, making submissions to publications so that I can just do the patterns. There's a couple of ideas I've got that I really want to make, and I think early next year I'm going to focus on those rather than submitting ideas to magazines where you have to fit in with 
a certain design brief or mood board. Um, so that's my plan. Oh, I did have one other thing to tell you about, which I don't actually have anything to show you, but I have a design, a scarf out in the current issue of Crochet Now magazine. I'll pop in um, a little picture from the magazine here so you can see what it looks like. Yeah, and it's called the Good Vibes Scarf um, and it's made with Karen Simply Soft yarn, which is an Aran weight yarn. It's really smooth. It's the same yarn that's used in the Gun Gunter blanket that I also designed, which was out um, in August. It was out in the August issue, I think. So I'll be able to release that in December. Yeah, if that's right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's the same yarn, um, which is a really smooth Aran yarn. It's got a bit of a sheen to it. Um, so yeah, that's my latest scarf design, which is out in Crochet Now magazine right now. And that's it for today. I think that's all my news. I hope you've enjoyed listening. Thank you so much for coming back if you have listened to me before. And if you, I should have all said, said all this at the beginning, if you're a new viewer and you've made it this far right to the end of the podcast thank you so much it is really lovely to have you here um please give the podcast a like if you've enjoyed it and if you'd like to chat that would be lovely just drop any comments or messages you have for me in the comments underneath the podcast and i look forward to seeing you all again next time thanks very much bye bye